So let's pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for our time together. And we especially pray for all those people in Florida who are suffering, all those who lost their lives. And we give you praise and glory today, and we ask you to open our minds up to take in your word as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Mark chapter 5. Those of you who have your uh, Bibles with you, uh, Mark chapter 5, if you have it. And if you don't, then you can just listen along. It's a very familiar story. It's the woman afflicted with the hemorrhage. She was afflicted with a hemorrhage for 12 years. You're familiar with that one? She was bleeding. So let's listen to it. Uh, this is verse 24, chapter 5, verse 24. A large crowd followed and pressed around Jesus. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. So she had a hemorrhage for 12 years. Now, first of all, just keep this in mind that uh, numbers in the Bible have a lot of meaning. So the number 12 has meaning as well, okay? Uh, the number 12 in the Bible um, is the product of 3 and 4. 3 times 4 is 12. Uh, 3 signifies the divine, hence Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We have the Trinity. And 4 signifies that which is on earth. So, she is afflicted for 12 years. What does that mean? Uh, her hemorrhage or her suffering isn't just something that is because she's alive, her problems. It also has divine origin meaning God permits all of our suffering everything and anything we go through is permitted by God people say well God has nothing to do with it well uh, God has to do with everything because God is all-powerful God permits everything why I don't know, but we know that God permits everything. We have a lady here, her name is Encarnacion, that is her name. Uh, she had last year her 11 year old daughter, and this was in, in the news, it was very public here in Las Vegas. Her 11-year-old daughter was hit on the corner here not too far by a garbage truck. Hmm. And the garbage truck killed her. She was waiting there on the corner and the garbage truck swirled around and killed her. Her 11-year-old daughter. Her only daughter. And this Sunday uh, at the 10 o'clock Mass, this past Sunday, I celebrated the 10 o'clock Mass for her daughter. She came in with her daughter's picture. And I know her story and I asked her if she would uh, say something to the people. And so I took my microphone off and I gave it to her and she says, you know, my daughter was 
killed last year. But because of my daughter's death, I am here right now. I never went to church. I was not close to God. I had no relationship with God. And I know that my daughter, she says, is responsible for me being here and for me having a relationship with God. So I don't know why her 11-year-old daughter was killed. Uh, but there's obviously a purpose to everything that happens in our life. What is asked of us is to trust. And so this woman's affliction that she went through for 12 years isn't just because she's a human being and because she's alive. Everything has God's hand. If you read the book of Job, the very first chapter, you will see that even the devil has to ask God for permission in order to act, to tempt us. Even the devil has to ask God for permission. The devil was looking for people to tempt and the Bible says, God says, have you ever noticed my servant Job? God gives the devil permission to test Job. So our whole life, in other words, is one big test, whether we will make it or not. And it's the test in what? It's a test in trust, whether I will trust God when I go through my own trials and tribulations and problems. And so uh, this woman was afflicted with 12 years with her bleeding. She had a bleeding problem. Now, blood in the Bible signifies life. Whenever the Bible talks about blood, it's talking about life. So her bleeding problem was draining her of life. Now think about that in your own life. You know, what is your own bleeding problem? What is draining you of your life? Well, maybe it's a person in your life. Maybe it's your depression or your loneliness. Who, what's draining you? You know, your fear, maybe your addiction. What is it that is draining you of life? She had a hemorrhage for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. So she went and sought help from many men who only exploited her and didn't help her. Doesn't that remind us so much in, in, in today's day and age also? People who are suffering from things that are bleeding them, like loneliness or anxiety or whatever they're, they're going through, and then they go and they seek help from other people. And what they do, they exploit them. They use them. People will use you and exploit you when you are vulnerable. This is what happened to her. Now you have to remember, she is the untouchable. When you had a bleeding problem, you go back to the Old Testament, the very first books, and they will tell you, particularly the book of Leviticus, about what happened to people, and especially women, who were bleeding. They were untouchable. Nobody could touch them. Their own family could not get close to them. The children were forbidden from touching their mother. The husband was forbidden from touching his wife because she had a bleeding issue, because she was bleeding. Can you imagine, ladies, not being able to be touched by your husband? It's a lot of suffering. 
or by your children not being able to be touched. It's a horrible, horrible feeling not being able to be touched. All of us have a need, you know, that's why we shake hands, we hug, because we all have a need for the human touch. Well, a person like her was ostracized, marginalized, excluded. She was totally excluded, even by her own family. She had to be at a complete distance. She was the unclean because of her problem. She was totally unclean. Nobody could touch her, especially a man was not allowed to touch her, especially a holy man was not allowed. I mean, a rabbi getting close to a bleeding woman? Totally unheard of. She's the untouchable. And she had spent all she had trying to get help. How many, even some of you here, I know, because I look around, how many of you here have spent all you had, or most of what you had, trying to get help in the casino? <laughs> mm -hmm. yep. Oh yeah. How many people try to get help and spend all they have, you know, in strip clubs? Or how many people spend all they have on prostitutes? People spend all they have trying to get help for their own bleeding issue from people who don't help them, but exploit them. That is the casino, my dears. Doesn't help you. It exploits you. It exploits your vulnerabilities. Don't be suckered into that. Yet, instead of getting better, she grew worse. Isn't that the case? You know, when you spend all you have on alcohol, or when you spend all you have on drugs, when you spend all you have in the casino, when you spend all you have on sex, when you spend all you have on all those other things, you don't get better, but instead you get worse. You grow worse and worse and worse until eventually, like a couple weeks ago, you commit suicide. Like the oldest son of Fidel Castro a couple weeks ago. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. So she heard about this Jesus, because he was very famous. Jesus was very famous. This is chapter five already of Mark's gospel. And Mark doesn't have anything about Jesus' birth or life or anything, it's just his ministry. He goes right into his ministry. So we are already in the middle of the action here in chapter five of Mark's gospel. And she has heard about this Jesus, like. So many of you as well, you know, you've heard about Jesus. You may not know him all that well. He may not be your friend. He may just be an acquaintance, but you've heard about him. And so here's what she does. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought this is extremely important. Some translations say that she said to herself, but this translation that I'm reading from is the correct translation because the Greek word here is the word thinking. She thought to herself. She thought to herself. If I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. The devil wants to destroy you by attacking your mind. 
He wants to attack your mind. It says she thought to herself, she, she's bleeding, she's got nobody, she's depressed, she's lonely, she's unclean, she's ostracized, she's marginalized, she's living a, living a miserable existence. But she hasn't lost her mind yet. None of you here have lost your mind yet. Well, most of them. <laughs> okay? When you lose your mind, then it's over. And people, people who've lost their mind, they're very, very happy people. Really, I know, I mean, you know, a lot, a lot of the homeless people that I meet, they're, they're very joy-filled, happy people. They live in their own world, you know. They, they're not the people who beg on the, on the highway corners. They're professional beggars, okay, <laughs> you know. But the people who, who come to our Catholic charities, you know, they're, something has happened in their life. They had a bleeding issue, if you listen to their story, that has led them to lose their mind. You haven't done that yet. Since you still have your mind, you can get better, in other words, just like her. You can get better. See, the devil wants to attack your mind if from the very beginning. This is what the devil did to Eve. He went after her thinking. The devil said to Eve, listen, think about it, he said. You know, uh, this God just wants you to be subject to him, not enjoy life. Think about it, Eve. And she gave in. So she still has her mind. And with everything that you have been through, and I know many of your stories, with everything that you have been through, that divorce, mm -hmm, everything that you have been through in your life, you know, your sickness, that cancer, with all the stuff that you have had to go through in your life, you have had every reason to lose your mind. With all the people who have taken advantage of you, that have used you, like her. You know, all the people who've made up stuff about you. Mm-hmm. Who've gossiped about you. You have had every reason in the book and in the world to lose your mind. But you haven't, just like her. You haven't lost your mind. You're here. That's what counts. And because she hasn't lost her mind, she goes to the one source that has the power to heal her. And she says, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped. And she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. Immediately, her bleeding stopped. Life in other words, went back into her. She got her life back fully because her life was being drained from her. She had no life. When you live in loneliness, in depression and anxiety, when you live in a situation where people are constantly draining you, exploiting you, using you, you have your life leaving you. And when she came to Jesus and touched him, she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. This is what Jesus wants for each and every one of us, to experience freedom from our suffering. And at once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? 
You see the people crowding against you? His disciples answered, and you can ask, who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. There you go. The clue to us, particularly in this Lenten season, the clue to us having our bleeding stop. She came and knelt before him and told him the whole truth. If you're keeping stuff inside of you, it's eating you up, eating away at you. So you come and you bear your soul to Jesus. And the bleeding stops. At the end of this month, I'm going to be going on a three-day retreat, a weekend retreat that I will be conducting as part of a team for women who have had abortions, and not just women, but men as well who have participated in abortions. And the bleeding that stops there when you admit it, when you let it out, when you voice it, when you take that secret that you have been living with for your whole life. That is why during the Lenten season, which is what we are in, the church says to us, you know, go to confession. Let it all out. Tell somebody what is it that you know has been afflicting you. And you let it out and the bleeding stops. That is what the Lord wants for each and every one of us, you know, for our own uh, bleeding issues. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, world without end.